you think you have all the money that you can do to enjoy it, you better enjoy it now. That's all that you have is this moment right now. So it's, it's, it's really precious. And sometimes people don't really believe how precious it really is. So take that. And he wasn't an old man either. So take that in, um, at heart. Even the young people, I think the young people sometimes think they're so young, they're just, they can, nothing can happen to young people. It's not, it's not true either. So I say it, when children, when they know right from wrong, they are accountable. They are accountable. So it's, it's important that uh, children are saved also. I looked at the calendar last night. I didn't see any birthdays in the church family for the day. If they are, let me know today, but I don't think I saw any. So we'll move forward. But I had my sister-in-law, Sister Paula Reeves, number two. She shared something with me after church, and this might be a blessing to some of you. When Hurricane Ian, Ian, Ian was here, it did some damage to roofs of houses and different things like that. Well, there's still some free money that's still out there. So if you had any damage during that hurricane, there's a resource that you will be able to get as a flyer here, and y'all can take a, definitely a picture of it. And if anything, because they're trying to get rid of the money, because they have extra money. So anything that happened to your roof, if you would like to uh, check on it and see if they will come in and take care of it, that will be a blessing to you. As much as insurance is nowadays, if y'all haven't noticed that insurance on houses have tripled almost. But you know what? God's people will always say always. They will always be blessed. We will never go without because our God owns everything. Do you believe our God owns every day? Everything. So don't worry about it. Say, Lord, I trust you. And we thank God for that. Remember that there is still food in my office for those that might need a hand out this time, this season. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes people are prideful. But you know what the Bible says, pride goeth before fall. If you know of someone that needs some food, please, I want to start with new, fresh things this year. This is 24. The things are not outdated, but if y'all don't hurry and get it, it will be. So if you need something, please see me after service. Let's give Pastor a hand as he comes forth this morning. Let the church shout hallelujah. Someone say glory to God. You guys look beautiful. You look wonderful. You look so good. You make a pastor proud. God is a good God. Amen. He is a good God. And it's good to be part of it. You know, it's something we said earlier during the week. A family. And part of the family on Wednesday shared some good news. Amen. And Sister Brown shared some good news. And, you know, and, and, and later on that week, we got some more good news. From, I said, this must be good news week. And Minister Sherverton gave me a call and shared some good news on his side. That's what it's all about, amen? amen? Lord have mercy. Wouldn't it be something special if a Northern Ground Church would be the church that God uses to tell the world that you are a liar? Black people can come together. Amen. Wouldn't it be something? We put down our sword and shield we stop, crab, stop the crab mentality when one of us get ahead. Don't be jealous. Bless them. Can you say amen? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hey, y'all, we make Channel 9 our witness news. There's a church in Oakland. It ain't that big a church. It's a small church, but there's a handful of black folk that are getting along. Somebody say they're getting along. Isn't God good? And I love that. I, I love that. We are a family. And when you hang out with people, when you grow together, you, you get old together, you start out young, get older together, you get to see the steps slow down, and 
get to, you get to see them age and you know and you get to see gray growing in places that there wasn't <laughs> you just get you know I mean a little spatter here and everywhere but God is a good God amen and one of the greatest things you love about him is that he tells us I never leave you because life is always transitioning life is changing man this thing is in action this thing is moving amen and this ain't a dress rehearsal this is it <laughs> this is it but it's just so wonderful to say listen we're going to share life together that's why it's so special you see the, I look over at my wife and I thank God for her I told her, I said, babe, we come a long way from that little turtle at, at BCC. They had a little, little recreation park on the outskirts of Bethune-Cookman College. And sometimes we would take her for a walk. We'd go down there at night to the park. And they had these you know, little rides. Little kids get on these little kitty rides. And uh, so we were just sitting, you know, just mess around, whatever. And just, I said, baby, this is little, we are a long ways from that little turtle. But the wonderful thing about it is that she's been with me. Amen. And now we transition in, into a different season. This is a different season. We, we're in Medicare season. Amen. You thank God. That's a good thing. You, 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 we've made it there. Amen. But, but I'm not the same 22 year old that was sitting on that turtle. Amen. And she's not the same 22. She's better. She's, she's been seasoned with salt. And she's just sweet. So God is good. And I say that as, as pastor, really say that sincerely, because that's what it's about. We're a family. That's why we don't let gossip and stuff come in, because it can kill a church and destroy a church. But boy, where there's unity. It's like that all that ran down, whose beard? Aaron's beard. Where, where's this there's unity, God will be there. So I just want you to say those little things. You know, the day, I don't know what y'all are talking about, but the day is a short Sunday. I heard since we were talking about the weather out there being a little cloudy, it might be raining. We're getting out here where it's raining or not. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Solomon says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Amen. Better this thing come to an end. You know, just toward the end, you know, I caught an attitude with carrots. I did. I just, I, 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 I just caught an attitude with them. I had broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. So for, I ate all around them. I said, I don't want another carrot. Not this time. God is good. Love you guys. And pastor, say that sincerely. Love you. It's good to see brother Wells back with us. Amen. Give me that thumbs up again. All right, I like that. I like that. Sister Wells, both of them. Amen. So God is good. God is good. God is good. Now, I'm going to share with you <clears throat> a little bit. Thank you, Minister Hardy and Sister Hardy for sharing the scriptures. God just kind of came in this morning and gave me something to talk about, just shortly and briefly. Whole different scripture and everything. I'm going, okay, Lord. When he started reading the scripture, it says we have to, we, we have to um, go a whole different route. I said, God, but you are in control. You are totally in control. 
So he is good. And you know what? I, I, I look at us and I think about some things and I pray to the Lord too to keep us. You know, how you how many of you remember that little spurt of of organization when we we called a few members and a few members attended. We opened up some TD Waterhouse accounts, in America American Trade. Amen. Have you seen the stock market lately? Have you seen the stock market? And 90 and 80 percent of us have nothing to do with it. Went past, broke a new record, 38,000, and kept running. But most of us, we have nothing to what? Nothing to do with it. Don't even know anything about it. But it's always been a pastor's heart. And, you know, a lot of times I'd be praying to the Lord. It's almost like when you go fishing, you know, you just, you'd be waiting and trying to find that big, that right spot and do this and do that and so forth. And sometimes I said, I'd be saying, Lord, I've got my fishing rod. I got everything. I'm waiting on you to help tell me when to cast this thing. Can somebody say amen? Because if not, you, you experience what they call FOMO, FOMO. F-O-M-O. And that's the dangerous thing. You have to be careful. It's the fear of missing out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The fear of missing out. But you, you and I see, I'm, I'm, I'm pastors trying my very best to listen and be attentive to what God could be saying to us. I said, Lord, shoot, a few years ago, we tried to get the, men, the members interested. Amen. Some did. I got, and I got, a, I got a young lady who used to be a member, and we, we interested to her. She's gotten married. She's, she's married to her and had to follow her husband. And the thing that gets me is that she said, Pastor, just, you know, I want, I, I want you to know, thank you. She said, I am in the stocks. She said, I'm doing pretty well. I said, wait a minute. Now, how can a student now talk to the teacher of the goodness of God? But you know what? I'm trusting God because one of the things I want to be sure of is that our young people, the younger people, the younger people have a knowledge and, and, and awareness of that and at least be able to say, hey, I can participate in that. Amen? Because it ain't about how much you have, it's about how early you start. When is the best time to plant a tree? Someone says 20 years ago. But since you missed that, when is the next best time? Right now, amen? So, so that's what some pastors are. You know, I really think about that because I'm praying about it. I says, Lord, you guide us and you lead us and you direct us and you order our steps. You know, I'm happy. You know, what the banks are doing, trying to keep our business and so forth. But... They're taking our resources and they're making money off of them. Amen. That little, that little checking account you have, that little savings account, they're using it. They're using it. They're taking your money and making money off it and then give you 0, 0, 0, 0.1%. Amen. Well, anyway, pastor's doing a lot of talking because I tell you, I'm not going to, God has given me a kind of unusual basically a little review about what we've been talking about. We're going to be moving out of your way. Before we get to our offering, let me share some humor. Are you still smiling? Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you. Keep, keep smiling. Keep going. And whatever God gives you, remember, you got to fight for it. You got to fight for it. Because the devil will try to steal it. You got to fight for it. So we love you. And I'm reminded if, you, if you're still smiling, still laughing, that's a good thing. This is an old one. You probably heard this one before. But anyway, this pastor went hunting. 
and went bear hunting. He had his rifle, so he, he all day long he was looking for a bear. He had, didn't see a bear at all, so he was frustrated. Threw his gun down, started walking away, and out of nowhere came this big grizzly bear. Before he could get to the gun, grizzly bear poof, plopped on top of him. And he was just salivating with him, showing his teeth, going to eat you, going to eat you. So the pastor, the only thing he could think of was to pray. He said, Lord, make this bear a Christian. Sure enough, the expression on the bear face changed. Start salivating. The bear got off the pastor, kneeled down next to the pastor, put his paws together and said, Lord, I want to thank you for this food I'm about to partake in. I like it. Amen. Amen. Come on, Archie. Let's, 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 let's. We'll come back at the end of service. And we'll have a little something. We just see how God wants to do this thing. God is good. Amen. Isn't it good to have a little fun? Uh, fellowship and so forth. Amen. And if, if you need me or need to catch pastor, just find the gainesses because I'll be with them. <laughs> Amen. Wherever they go, what, what was that? Who was that? Ruth and Naomi? If they had to, if they had the Long Johns, I'm going to Long Johns too. No, no, not today though. Not today. Not today. <laughs> We've been talking about having good success. Somebody help pastor say good success. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. And when we finish this message, I just want to review with you and talk, talk to you about a few things. We're going to come back together as we close out the message. What, something God's laid upon my heart. Hopefully we can close it out the way that he, I, I think he laid it upon my heart. Just simple. Just simple. Just simple. Again, thank the Lord for our associates and their spouses, their family. We prayed for a long time trying to figure out, Lord, why are you sending all these associates? Why are you, and their spouses and everything, thank you, Lord, for them. And now we see they've been a very special help for pastor. Amen. Give them a hand, amen. <laughs> amen. Very special help. You know, Superman used to jump over buildings and do all these wonderful things. Now, amen, I'm just content with being Clark Kent for a while. Amen. But in spite of all that, God is still good. His mercy endures forever. And always thank you, Lord, for Sister Reeve. She's a special lady. My goodness. Pray for her. Pray for her is our prayer. And, and family, thank you. We love you. And we're going to just pray that God would just continue to keep you and smile upon you. The times we live in, everywhere you look, people are talking about end times. These are the end days and the end times and so forth. Well, whatever they are, we're going to have to make the best of them. We can't spend our time worrying about, is it, is it last days? Is Jesus coming next week? If he's not coming next week? And so you're going to have to take... Basic, you know, whatever we have, we're going to have to make the best of it because this is, God has saved us for such a time as what? Such a time as this, and we'll make the very best of it. What I want to do this morning is call your attention to the 23rd Psalms. Thank my daughter-in-law, and my son, and Big Freddie back there for all they do to make this happen. But I just want to review with you, we've been talking about something. We've been talking about having good success. Yes. Amen. And there have been a whole series of that. Whole series of that. But I want to read the 23rd Psalm. You can read along with Pastor. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Want. He's making me to lie down in green pastures. leading me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody help me say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From the series of nothing but having good success, pray with me just for a moment from this subject. Make sure you are being followed. Make sure you are being followed. Amen. The Message Bible kind of shares the 23rd Psalm in a different perspective, but I love the way it shares it. It says, God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and you send me in the right direction. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and you send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head, my cup brims with blessings. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life, and I'm back home in the house of the God, uh, the house of God for the rest of my life. Someone help pastor say, make sure you are being followed. Now, as a teacher for 30 some years in the Orange County public school system, as pastor told you before, I said, you know, a good, a good, great teacher always takes the time to review, because a lot of times, most some. Some folk don't remember the message even when they're leaving the church door. And they don't, can't recall, amen, very much all the time. So I'm going to review a little bit, hit upon what God has told me to share, and we're going to be out your way. Amen. Now, good success, first of all, we learn, is not found in fame. Is that correct? Yes. You, just because you're famous doesn't, make, doesn't mean you're having good success. The pastor has talked time and time again. We see so many famous people, lives who come to a, an abrupt end, tragic, all kinds of stuff happen. So good success is not fame. We said good success is not having a lot of stuff. Can somebody say amen? It's not about a lot of stuff. My Lord, matter of fact, you know, after a while, if you have too much stuff, it clutters. It cl Amen. It clutters. It's just, it just getting away. Amen. You just, you know, you, you know where am I, where's my wallet and where's my keys? That's what I need. I, I, amen. I need to find my wallet. I need to find my keys, whatever. So, so a lot of that stuff just gets in the way. Amen. One of the things you have to realize also, good success is not comparing yourself to others. Someone shout, don't compare. It's foolish to compare because you don't have the same purpose. They don't have your purpose, and you don't have their purpose. So you don't compare yourself to others, all right? We said good success is definitely not comparison. And good success doesn't have to be a big thing, we pastor said time and time again. It simply has to be what? Oh, come on. If it doesn't have to be a big thing, it has to be what? Your thing. Say your thing. Right, and a lot of times the enemy will try to deceive us we try to make us think that what we're doing is not significant. You never always know that you're, what the role you play in a person's lives or, or the, the impact you may have upon somebody may not be revealed until later. Dr. King wasn't really significant until after they killed him. Before they killed him, they were trying to lock him up. There wasn't no street signs after Dr. King. There wasn't no holiday. Man got a significant. After they shot and killed him, now he's significant. So you have to realize that before he was killed, he was making an impact that could not be forgotten. Amen. 
So here's one thing we watch out for is the enemy. He'll try to make you think that your life is not significant. He'll try to make you think that what you're doing is not significant because that's something that we all desire. We all desire to make a difference. Amen. Especially when it comes to your life and, 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 and your, your destiny. We all want to make a difference, but be careful. He can use that against you because you never know that what you're doing right now is, is as significant as it ever going to be. I'm thank God for the little people that raised this boy from Umatilla. I thank God for Mama Douglas. Like, you know, Pastor told you about stockings just came out to a knee. I thank God for that woman and some butterscotch candy Amen. and some peppermint ball. Yes, Amen. No one would consider that significant, but look, look, but look at the fruit from that. Right. Years later, she's going on to be with the Lord, having a good time in heaven. And that little boy who thought he was getting over on you. Yes, Amen. Amen. He's now pastoring. So you never know the significance of what you do. That's why you be, you be nice to everybody. Treat people good. Can you say amen? Treat people fair. You don't never know that you might have an encouraging word that stops someone from taking their life. You, because you don't know somebody you sitting next to could be seriously depressed. And just encouraging word. Can you say amen? So, so good success. I'm not comparing to this person. This person, you know, has $100. Amen. I got $50. Amen. He's got a new car. I got an old car. Amen. These people have their own. No, 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 no. Your father knows what you have need of. And he'll take care of you when it's time to be taken care of. Amen. So good success is not, don't compare yourself. Don't compare. One thing we find out about good success is this. It is, first of all, if you want some good success, do this. Make God a priority. Someone say priority. Yes, sir. Yeah. Before you brush your teeth in the mornings, make who a priority? God. Make God a priority. If you don't whisper nothing but thank you, Lord. Yes, you, you, you woke me up to what? Yes, and you started me on my way. Yes. So make God a what? Priority. I told you, you know, I, I had fun when I preached that one because, I, you know, we, 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 the man who said he's going to build bigger barns and do all this stuff, and God said, fool, you're going to die tonight. Who's all that stuff going to be? Amen. And I, I enjoyed that message because I said, mama didn't raise no what? Listen, baby, did you listen? Amen. Right. So, so that's not that. Good success is making God the priority, making his word priority. Amen. Amen. If you disagree and I disagree, if I don't think you're right, I have my opinion, you have your opinion. I want you to say the one that we go upon is what God says. God's word becomes priority in our lives and we make him the final authority. I wish somebody just, I'm just reviewing. That's all God told me to do today. Review. And he gave me a closing this thing and I'm going to close this thing. Yeah, and one of the things we talked about, too, is about self-deception. Why in the world do you want to fool yourself? You got enough people. We have enough people out there trying to trick us. We got to fight a devil and got to fight demons. You got to fight people who don't like us. Why would you voluntarily fool or try to deceive yourself? But the Bible says you do it every Sunday if you hear the word and don't do it. He said, if you're hearers of the word, not doers of the word, you're like a person looking at themselves in the mirror and forget what they look like. Amen. You fall into a category called self-deception. Yes, so good, if you want good success, family, you just can't just come to pastor and the associates or whomever to hear it. You've got to make this applicable to your life. Can I get a witness in the house? We talked about the fact that those whom God loves, he chastised. Some of us, if we're not doing right, if we know what the word says and we don't do the word like any good father, you're going to correct that child. So sometimes the Bible says, don't, 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 don't despise the chastening of a father for whom the Lord loveth. He'll do what? I like to say, tear it up, Lord. Tear it up. Yeah, my goodness. I, I remember them whoopings from you, Matilda. Mulberry tree. I remember, I remember them whoopings. I, I told you, Rick got both of us beaten because he wouldn't fess up. <laughs> Amen. 
But God loves he 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 spank us. Sometimes he'll let us go through stuff. Sometimes he'll let stuff come through his fingers that that affect us. But you got to remember, God controls everything. The enemy can only go so far. He's in control. But a lot of times he he he'll chastise us because he wants us to be close to him. He wants us to be dependent upon him. He wants us to look to no one, no other source than him. And any time you take money and you put that before God, that's an insult. How in the world, think about it, think about it, think about it. When you go somewhere, you know, you're standing in line, you go somewhere, you're standing in line, you know, you're standing in line. And one of the one things you don't know, you don't want somebody to skip you. Amen. Now, you know, you know, they, they make you lose your salvation one day. But think about this. When you don't put God first, by God, if he's God, he's bigger than the universe. If he's God, he's, he's never lost a battle. If he's God, he'll make a way where there is no way. Then, then if he's all of that, how do you put him in line with the other people? If he's God, prioritize him. Make him first. First thing in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me say it. Say, thank you, Jesus. When I get my little check, I cast this check. It's because of your goodness. Thank you, Lord. I don't always do something. Always get me sometimes. I got people who, 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 who I got, I'm still waiting on them to break me off a piece. They're going to break me off a piece. Yeah, I'll break. They ain't broke it yet. Amen. Oh, pastor, when I get such and such and such, pastor, I'm going to break you off a piece. No, uh-uh, no, I ain't waiting. I, I, I'll, I'll lose weight waiting on that. <laughs> Someone say, make him a priority. Make God a priority. You come to church, and I, and, and, and I, and I commend those who are bringing their youth to church and the young people. I do commend you. I, I commend you. There should be no option. Yeah, that's what we did. We went to church. Amen. Isn't God good? We went to church. Lord, if you own the universe, if you spoke all this into existence, I'm floating around on a little, a little grain of sand compared to the universe called earth. It's being held up by nothing but your word. I say, awesome doesn't describe you, Lord. Awesome is not good enough, Father. This little thing we call planet Earth, we're running around trying to find a place to stay, trying to get some food, get some gas. This little thing, it's sitting out there in open space, just floating. Nothing underneath supporting it. Nothing attached to the side supporting us. Nothing hanging from the ceiling supporting Earth. It's just floating and turning. My God, my God. I said, if he's God, someone help me say, if he's God. If he's God, he's bigger than whatever I face. If he's God, he's, he, 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 he'll make a way where there is no way. If he's God, he'll open doors that cannot be closed. Somebody say, if he's God. Then it'd be an insult for me to put him on the end of the line. I, I don't know why I stuck on priority. That no, I, Let me go. I got to move on. But somebody say, make him a priority. Put him first. Let him know that, Lord, you are a valued friend of mine. And I want you to know, Lord, I love you and, and, I, and I always will. But I just want to say that, you know, a lot of times we realize that uh, good success is not that hard. It's not that deep. You can have good success. And I want to hit 23rd Psalms a little bit and focus upon. Would you put up 23rd Psalms for me back there real quickly? And I just want to talk with you a little bit and let you see. Are y'all all right out there? Yeah, Sister Reed said some of y'all didn't start until late. <laughs> Amen. So you'll be all right, won't you? Now, in order to have good success, there are divine intersections where you will cross paths with certain people. In order to have good success, 
there are divine intersections where you will cross paths with certain people, but they will be arranged by God. The Lord is my what? That makes me what? Little Pope Pete. Who's in charge? If he's a shepherd, he's out in front. And if he's a good shepherd, you're not going to want anything. And what is simple is simply you won't need anything because he's leading you. All right, next. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me in beside what? It, you know, where, if he's taking me somewhere now, it's going to be calm. I, I'm going to, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to chill out because he knows what he's doing. He's going to be still provide. Next, next verse. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of what? For his what? Now look at path up there real closely with me. What did you notice on the end? There's an S up there. Oh my goodness! Because a lot of us think it's just you know we're on a, it, you are on a path, but I just want you to see that path will branch out kind of like a tree limb, and will touch other people. Are you hearing, Pastor? So how do you know you're having good success? First of all, once you become saved, born again, it should be your desire to allow God's word to be the final authority, right? In your life, he's final authority. In your life, he has the last word. So that n now takes you off of the hellish path that you was on. Because you out there, out there popping your fingers, out there, hey, give me a hit, man. Y'all look straight ahead, because I'm, I'm going to preach what God gave me anyway. Out there, hey, you know, out there winking at somebody who has the potential to take you out of here, give you a disease that will mess you up. But once we become saved, come on, by default, we've been placed on a path, a whole nother path. Now, if, you, if, if you're one of them jokers that's doing this, y'all better talk to pastor. You ain't on the, you, you, you're not completely on the right path. This path will branch off to many paths. But you have to get on the path. How do you get on the path? You get on the path by following God's word. Because it's going to guide me and lead me and direct me. When I come up, next to that pretty girl and she's smiling at me if I'm on the right path I will immediately recognize that's a detour Amen. Amen. I told my wife I was working with a young lady at in, in the school system I ain't gonna say where Orlando I mean I'm just kidding and you know coach Reeves you know she's a, she's a teacher also so I'm just having a good time and everything. And, it, you know, they had change of gifts and so forth, Christmas time, you know. And I told my wife about it, too. I told her. This, this, this lady, so she said, she said, Coach Reeves, I have a gift for you. Yeah, I said, you do? She said, yes, but he said, it can't be wrapped. Someone said, the path of righteousness. Amen. I knew that was a detour. Right? That was a detour. Yes. <laughs> On the path of what? But the path of righteousness is put there to keep me from making that wrong what? Hey, do you, do you see this? Don't care about that. I said, isn't that some stuff here? I said, so, so the path of righteousness, by default, you will follow it when you obey God's word. Right. Oh, somebody talk to me. Can you say amen? Yeah. Now, I'm going to see that. So he, 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 he leaded me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And I'm, hey, I'm, 
I'm, I'm just going to share where we are. As I, I don't want to make this any longer than it has to be. Listen, I can remember my daughter met this young man that I haven't had a chance to meet. And I had a chance to meet him. I said, who is this young man that she's talking so much about? Somebody called him. You know his name. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> I, had, I hadn't met Terrence. I didn't know anything about my son-in-law. Love my son-in-law. Just want to make a point here. I'm on the path of what? Fascistness. Walking. Got my daughter on that path. Got my children on the path. Everybody's on that path. Even the dog is going right along with us. Somebody say, on the path. On the path. Now, if, I, you, if you ain't careful, you see, my son-in-law, and then I said, I want you to get this straight. Now, I love him dearly. Love him dearly. But when I first met him, I had never been that close to dreadlocks. <laughs> you get me later, son-in-law. I got you now, boy. I got you now. And I had no, I was a, and, and my daughter was in love. <laughs> she was in love. You know, yeah, but, 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 but guess what, guess what, guess what? Now, guess what now? So now you got to make a decision. Now, my son-in-law, and then, and then my wife, we all met. Yeah, I said, yeah, this is the closest I've ever been to, you know, dreadlocks, you know? And, and uh, I said, because I've seen them on TV. I see him on TV. I see him. I see him across the street too, because I'd be on one side, to be on the other side. <laughs> but I never seen him. But and then Sister Reed, you know how she is. Oh, baby, <laughs> he's a good-hearted boy. <laughs> he's a good-hearted boy. Yeah, he is, isn't he? But look at, you can't prejudge someone. Terrence was part of God was going to use him to introduce a whole family. Y'all don't hear Pastor talk. He was going to introduce our whole family. Hey, I would have never met Minister Hardy. Come on now. That path led, and it, I could have acted silly and stupid. Didn't do the stupid part. Maybe not. Not just out here. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know my rules. He's he he. If he don't come to, if he wants to be part of the Afro family. We'll talk about it, but, but you know, you can't, you gotta be part of the Afro. We are froze. God had brought him, boom, to be a connection between two families. Now, how powerful that thing was. Terrence's father, it was the elders of the, of the siblings, and it's been his goal to have his family worship to. That thing, so now that path is taking another way. God mighty. So we got all the brothers in the house, and, and, and they finally invited one to a Christmas, what was that, Super Bowl party coming next week. Brother Chris, yes, sir. <laughs> Are you here, Pastor? Fried chicken. Draw mess. And that boy could go. Now, that path has taken another twist, coming back toward Terrence's side. That path now has, I don't know how close the Shurgan has lived to Terrence and their family. Do 
three houses down. That path has led to three houses down to a man and a couple I never met. But they're sitting here. Y'all better help pass preach this thing. Because he leadeth thee in the path of what? Not for your sake, for his sake. That's why it's important, family. That's why, Pastor, you don't play with it. You don't know, as a result of that, that meeting Terrence and being introduced to the family. Yes, sir. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no, oh, 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 wait a minute. Sister Gladys. Amen. Isn't God good? Are well, you seeing what Pastor's saying? It will be, it will be, it will be. It, it, see, it will be when you're on the right path, it will branch out. That's why he said the path. And, and, and it will make the right connections with the right people. When you live a sloppy, compromising life, you're not hurting nobody but yourself. God has a path, family, that you got to walk on. He don't want to make you walk on the thing. You have to walk that path. And as you walk that path, you're gonna make connections. So, so look at look at look at look at what God did from, from a wonderful son-in-law. Give him a hand. I don't know if Sister Reed's got to him or not, but one day he walked, he walked in the yard and everything was cut off. I said, that's my boy. <laughs> Amen. It is not hard by default. You know, when you hit the computer and you want to go out and do something, by default it goes starts, it goes back to the point where it came from. But as we walk this thing, family, we want good success. We just don't want to be successful. We want good success. That means that we got to walk the path that God has laid out for us. If you stay on that path, it's gonna bring you by. It's gonna bring you to places and the things because this is how it works family everything you will ever need has already been dumped here for you did y'all hear pastor everything you will ever need has already been dumped here for you it's been dumped here for you it's, it's, it's yours it's been already dumped here, here's your stuff over here on I-4 you on the turnpike. So why is it so hard, Pastor? Why God don't answer my prayer? But it, your stuff is on our own path of righteousness. And when you get on that path, oh, family, if you hear Pastor, when you get on that path, then, then it doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. It simply means that you will intersect with the people whom God wants you to intersect with. Give it to you. It, was, was that all right? Yes, Isn't God good? So, so that's what you need to realize. And that's what, when I says, here's what we do. Stand to your feet. Because I'm going to share this, I'm going to share this, this last part of this sermon. After we have the invitation. Because I want a special song that has blessed pastor to be played. And we're going to loop it a little bit. And I'm going to talk to you. Isn't God good? He is so good. And those of you who are watching online. And even those who are present. God is a good God. We're going to make sure you're being followed. That's what I want you to do. As we go through life, just make sure you're being followed. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm going to talk about the psalmist says, Surely, goodness and mercy has been 
following me all the days of my life. If I just take the time to look close enough, who's, can I get a witness somebody? I can say, surely, goodness and mercy. Oh, you human tell the boy, city, say, what good thing can come out of there? All I can tell is been by the goodness and the mercy of a wonderful Savior. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, just ask him to come to your heart. He'll do that today. He'll do that. He'll be your Savior. He says, Lord Jesus, just say, Lord Jesus, I need a Savior. I, I, I ask you to come and be in our hearts, be in my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe, definitely believe with all my heart that Christ, you've been raised from the dead. And Lord, you sit up on the right hand of the Father. And I thank you. I'll make you my Lord and Savior today. Forgive me and cleanse me. And I also pray for the gift and the comfort of the precious Holy Spirit to be with us. In Jesus' name, I receive it. Can you say amen? I say welcome to the family. Put your hands together. Thank <laughs> you.